Welcome everyone to the first meeting of the Miami Township Trustees in the month of March. Or August. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. Done. I am done. <laughs> Should we turn it off and start? That's That's true. Okay. <laughs> August. Um, if it's March, then how'd the election go? Apparently <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Last election. <laughs> um, I'd like to uh, recognize who's here. We have our Assistant Chief, Debbie Powell. Colin Altman, our saving the last few days of his tenure here as <laughs> Chief. <laughs> Lauren Schaus, Chuck from the YS News. Um, Citizen, Gina Gunder Klein, and the three trustees, and our most excellent minute taker, Cynthia Powell. Okay. Um, I'd first like to entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of July 17, 2023. I have moved. I second. I have one correction. I'm sorry I didn't put it here. You can move in a second. Do we have any discussion? That's what I'm discussing. One correction. One correction. Where, where did my minutes go that I let you read? I handed it over to you. Oh. All right, well, now I can find it. This is teeny. Second page, trustee mutual noted Mr. Wary to also call for zoning commissioner, Zoff's resignation, and zoning inspector. That's not, all not I have. Uh, so, I already pointed out uh, in my standing committee's report, or whatever we call it, uh, the Clifton Union Cemetery Board was meeting on August 3rd, not 8th. Okay. That's been moved and seconded to adopt the minutes of July 17, 2023, as corrected. Uh, trust, uh, Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Moocher? Yes. The minutes are adopted. Okay. Um, I also entertain a motion to approve the payment of our bills. Well, aren't we going to approve the special meeting oh, yeah. 728? Thank you. Thank you. We had a special meeting at 728, and did Don hear the minutes? They're very simple. I entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of special meeting July 28th. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, may we vote? Been moved and seconded to adopt the minutes of the special meeting held July 28th, 2023, as presented. Uh, Mr. Moocher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moore? Yes. Okay, I'd entertain a motion to approve the payment of our bills in the amount of $62,843.10. That's general fund $8,043.37, fire fund $45,516.96, EMS billing $2,623.12. Cemetery, $1,216.31. Road and Bridge, $5,443.34 in total. So moved. Second. Any dis discussion? Bye-bye. Hearing none, may we vote? It's been moved and seconded to approve payment of bills in the amount of $62,843.10 as enumerated. Mr. Moocher. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. Motion approved. Does anybody have anything for any public have an agenda item you'd like to bring up? Who's keeping correspondence? Just oh. in general? No. I don't think that's just a bad curious. idea. Can you read it? Well, yeah, there's a lot of interesting correspondence. Otarma 35th anniversary, um, YSPD community survey, Stephanie Goff, county engineer, um, a collective paving update. Steve Ware had a public information request. Scott Wright um, was congratulating you on the Cemetery Association meeting, possibly on your nice um, delivery of this presentation. Um, Ohio Auditor's Office about the Clifton Union Cemetery. Kelly Patron requested a delay of her BZA. Um, MVRPC. Age-Friendly Network News, Logical Solution, that, that, that was, that 
that was a scary one only because they want to verify our domain name and that we did that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We. Yeah. Sometimes we'll write that down. And make sure. I did it. In case you get hit by a bus, we should probably write down mm -hmm. that information. Um, Jay Huber, our attorney, and Richard Zopf had a back and forth about the clarifications of some minor things in zoning resolution chapter 18. Marilyn Moyer um, had a hypothetical inquiry about a 80 home development in the township. And thank you guys for your response. Well, you got I answers to that, didn't you? I did. It's good. It's exactly what I wanted. I only saw my answers. Um, no, Richard and, and, and um, Chris all, all both responded. Um, Chris C. Fritz, um, the um, Green County Regional Planning had a confidential audit report. So confidential that you didn't print it out. That's true. R.J. Parker had a public info request for Miami Township budget 2024, and he received it. Um, there was a back and forth of communication between Richard Zopp and Steve Weirig. Um, multiple correspondence regarding agritourism, CUAV, CAUV, and um, temporary use hearing, the temporary use hearing of July 6th, I think that 23, not 24. Um, we got the grass, Grassroots Ohio Township Association newsletter and um, or Alicia Austin question, we had questions regarding a um, VA burial and Clayman sent us a breakdown of June 2023. That's it, mostly. I have two late breaking pieces. Of oh yes, David Graham. Uh, well, three, David Graham. And uh, from a a person um, requesting some zoning information, which Richard's not here. This, this is no sense going through that. And some correspondence from our attorney, Jen Huber, responding to your two questions. Oh, oh good. I was waiting for that. Mm -hmm. Well, they are on your desk. Awesome. That just came in? Mm -hmm. Good. I almost want to go and read it now. All right. You Fire. mentioned David Graham. Oh, David Graham, auditor, Green County auditor, is about um, our second our um, revenues for the second half of the year. Okay. Interesting. I have questions about that for you sometime. All right. Um, Fire department report. Okay. Um, Before um, we do that. Yep. Oh, yes. If you don't mind. Yeah. I'd like to make just a very brief comment. And I would ask that the comment be entered into the minutes uh, for the permanent record of the board. And, she, and he has a copy for you, I see. Yeah. yeah you have a copy. And I, could do it, I could do it digitally. And I'm that going to read it because I want it to be ver verbatim. And this is uh, in regards to Chief Altman's last meeting, which would be now. <laughs> Why do you look at me? Please. I don't know. I, 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 I mean, don't want his face on, on, the, <laughs> on the camera. Well, oh, they've all seen me. <laughs> I, yeah. I had a 30 episode run on the uh, COVID town hall. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You've had, you've, had your, you've had your camera time. Okay. It reads <clears throat> to Chief Altman this may be a sad day for us, but it must be a day you've been longing for especially as you ran into a burning house or pull, pulled a convulsing patient from a nasty auto accident. A week from today, the reality is that you will have left us. But more importantly, the greater reality is the legacy that you've left us. Look around. This is the legacy you're leaving us. This is your building, your dream for more years than uh, I can remember. But your greatest legacy will be the Miami Township Fire Rescue Service of today. A department that's fully staffed, highly trained, and able to respond to any emergency within minutes, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Think back to July of 1994. Could anyone imagine how far we've come in such a short amount of time? Every brick, every staff person, paid or volunteer, are 100% a result of your work. That is your legacy, and we and the residents of Miami Township will never be able to thank you enough.
Thank you very much. Until Friday when we're having another. <laughs> thank you very much. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. Much. Uh, <laughs> and what's left of my spine appreciates that too. Yeah. <laughs> Hauling patients out of cars and houses. <laughs> sure. And I didn't know he was going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and there will be an event Friday. Cake and ice cream. And the public. And the public. <laughs> yeah. Open to the public. Open to the public. Five to seven. And that is the first item under fire department report. Um, you wanted, you asked for this agenda item. Is Are we to... Okay, so take it. I, I just wondered, is there any um, reaction, result, uh, feedback, anything from Frank Cook and Steve who visit last week uh, with everyone in the department? Did everybody who wanted to talk to them talk to them? Did they talk to everybody they wanted to talk to? Any feedback to this point? I realize it's early, but they they want to come back and talk to a few volunteers and a couple of part-time people. Mm -hmm. um, that date is to be determined yet, um, but would expect in the next few weeks or so. Um, in, in terms of feedback, um, I think that we thought the overall experience was quite positive. Um, we did receive some very positive statements in terms of our policies and procedures and that being very progressive. Um, and that's, I think that's really it. They said they could have done without meeting with the board of trustees. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, that yeah, goes they, without saying. <laughs> <without stand. laughs> Both uh, Frank and Steve were extremely appreciative of all the comments that, that they received from you guys and from Justin and um, Chris and from Denny. Um, and they were, like Denny said, very complimentary of us as an organization, but also us as a township in the level of support that the fire department has received from both the public and the boards over the years. Um, and they were, Steve particularly was very big on, it's not something they normally find. Um, especially when they're called in to do an assessment. I mean, mm -hmm. it's usually a, a bad time for a lot of places or they're looking for a you know, big change or some of that. So he mm -hmm. said they were not very used to coming into a place where people seem happy and which is nice mm -hmm. um and the board is supportive you know so so i'm glad we break the uh break the mold good for the OFCA. we always have <laughs> this is true yeah. and, and <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure whether we made it clear this is the context yeah. that yeah. when you say that this is um, we um contracted for a, an overall assessment of the entire fire and EMS um, operation here. Um, kind of timed with Colin's departure, a new era, just kind of check in how are we doing, look at our um, operation, our, all the things over there that I don't know about, and um, staffing. And Particularly the transition from a primarily volunteer organization to a primarily paid staff volunteer, or not volunteer, and somewhat volunteer organization. That's one of the largest impetuses for the evaluation because we just didn't feel confident to be able to do it in-house. Are we doing things correctly? Are we doing too much of something, too little of something? All those little tweaks that, you know, would help us. And it will take help Denny when he takes the helm. Yeah, I'm I'm super excited about, you know, what we what we get back. Yeah. I so mean, I, I took a lot of notes, but you know, questions I was getting and you know just a lot of brainstorming and ideas where I would just kept going it was very very helpful experience I understand that they're going to make a presentation in, at the end to us and they suggested that we report to our own public too yeah. this but, is the Ohio Fire Chiefs Association um, who is it the Ohio Fire Chiefs Association they have a special service that does assessments of fire and EMS operations and were you wondering who the president of the Ohio Fire Chiefs Association is? I've been wondering that for years. Well, <laughs> Herman Altman is the current president of the Ohio Fire Chiefs Association. And keeping her up at night. <laughs> Only I knew. And I found out recently when the news profiled you, so. This is true. Right. Oh. You In the very well written article. It was a very well written article. I, thought, I mean, not that they're not normally, but I guess I can clarify that. For once. 
<laughs> Thank God we got it right that time. Thank <laughs> God. Um, I think Somebody I think I hauled right into. Um, that is not my ring. It's oh, mine just turned off. So, I think we hauled right into your nice speech, and then I and I went ahead without getting your report. Oh, well, that's all right. <laughs> we'll, we'll get it. Um, okay, as far as activity goes, we had 32 EMS calls, uh, seven fire incidences. And then, obviously, we went through, we saw the expenditures and, and that. Um, uh, I did, I have talked with two of the three of you. Um, as you guys are aware, we have had uh, a lot of trouble with our scheduling software. Um, it's just been really difficult. Um, so I did some research, uh, came up with a company that will better suit our needs on uh, that. Um, so the cost on changing scheduling software outside of ESO, which we are currently utilizing for the first year is $34.50. That includes... Um, it's uh, $3,450. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Um, and then each subsequent year after that is 1950. The additional cost is for training and the initial setup. Um, I will cancel the respective components within ESO, and at some point we will uh, then uh, not be paying so much into ESO, which I forget off the top of my head right now what that is. Um, so for us, this will improve overall scheduling just in general, um, significant improved back uh, in tracking employee benefit hours, uh, improvement in the time clock features itself, as well as employee submissions for request, uh, time off, and our administrative overhead for that. And then last but not least, automatic tracking of SLA work hours, which is currently manually done um, and represents a lot of time each pay period to do and rep and is gonna could easily cause some problems in terms of making mistakes and and there's a lot of uh, ramifications if we were outside of federal law on that so yeah so that will that will be a substantial improvement on on that um, we would end up taking splitting the the three thousand four hundred and fifty dollars out, split that out over the fire department's budget, our billing budget, and dividing that out amongst training and uh, contracts. So that's how we would pay for it. Um, so I would like to entertain the board approving that um, so we can start working on that. I would anticipate probably about 60 days turnaround before it's actually uh, live. If, if I may have a point of order, yes. In general, this is this is an internal decision in this oh, okay. department. Okay. It really doesn't need to come to the board for approval. <clears throat> so, thank you for exploring that avenue to, to better um, streamline our operation. Okay. And I'll, I'll chime in just quickly that the, the current system we're using, which seemed like a good idea at the time, um, which is an add-on to our records management, um, is nothing but easy. Um, yeah. And it takes us, what, probably two to two and a half hours per pay period just to run a report. That meets the requirements <coughs> that we had to in our Department of Labor okay. uh, findings. So. This should make life so much easier for the next generation. <laughs> Just to clarify, if I'm not going over this too much, generally considered operating procedure statewide for townships. You know, I don't, I'm not sure whether it's codified or not, but I have read more than a few times that departments generally are free to uh, manipulate up to $5,000. Okay. within their department. That's my question, is there, is there a dollar value? Mm -hmm. Roughly, it's usually $5,000 okay. before they yeah. have to have outside or you know, outside department. That's very helpful. Then, Don, if you would like to see 
what I went over with those two, I'd be happy to go over that with you. Okay. Well, I learned more about it at this meeting than I did when we talked about it, so that's good. So, um, yeah, I tried to boil it down a little a little more. So that, that $5,000 helps, so he couldn't go out and buy a new helicopter or something. Probably not. Not that for five. Be, that, would be, <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> Unfortunately, we'd still have to vote on each check. <laughs> True. <laughs> no. True. Okay. Um, Chris, you asked to put a fire fire department transition this what we talked about. Yes, that was it. That was it. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, anything else before we say an executive session? We have two resolutions. Two resolutions. Oh, two resolutions. For the fire? Mm -hmm. Okay. No. I see one. I, I see one. I, oh, I'm have, sorry, you're right. It's the, the other ones are fiscal, so. Right. Okay, well, the um, numbers are incorrect. Yes. How so? There should be 32 and 33. Yes. No, dear. Not 31 and 32. Correct. No. Okay. 31 was passed last night. Yeah. We went over that with her this afternoon, but apparently we missed, she missed one. <laughs> Um, I'd like to entertain a motion to pass resolution 2023-32, reclassification of, M of MTFR personnel, whereas a continued need exists to maintain proper staffing with the fire rescue department at all levels and classifications of staff, and whereas the members of the fire department occasionally require changes in classification due to changes in employment status, and whereas part-time firefighter EMT Mark Murphy and full-time Chief Colin Altman have served the department with distinction for many years, and whereas both members desire to change their classification, and whereas Assistant Jet Chief Denny Powell recommends the board authorize these changes. Now therefore, be it resolved that firefighter EMT Mark Murphy will be reclassified from part-time volunteer to status Part-time. Part-time to volunteer status. Oh, part-time to volunteer status. Mm -hmm. And Chief Colin Altman will be reclassified from full-time to volunteer status, both effective August 12, 2023. Wow, thank you, Colin. I so move. A second. Has, any discussion? Okay, hearing none, may we vote? Uh, it's been moved and seconded to approve resolution 2023-32, reclassification of Miami Township Fire and Rescue personnel as described. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Mutter? No. Protest. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's like the third time in 20 years it's been. <laughs> You said okay. that with it Make very sure forcefully. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's an X on his forehead. <laughs> and just in case you're wondering, I will not be going to calls under this. This is just to uh, maintain affiliation for me for training requirements and to help out with coming back after my two month period with trainings as requested, to help train as requested. So. That's wonderful. I'm very happy to hear it. So I'll be doing a lot of Zooms from there Florida, you. I guess now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Murphy will just be doing the exact same thing he does now, except as a volunteer. Okay. It's voluntarily? <laughs> voluntarily. <laughs> I know. Yes, very much so. Okay. His idea entirely. Shockingly. I would now like to entertain a motion to enter executive session to consider the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of a public employee or official. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? Hearing none, maybe we vote. Maybe we vote. It's up to you. I'm going to second to. Uh, we, to TV. recess for executive session. Uh, Mr. Mutter? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Moyer? 
Yes. And he says at 526 p.m. And we don't usually And this won't story. take forever, and there'll be <laughs> more meetings to more happen. Okay, we'll <laughs> more ask us. Well, <laughs> Assistant <laughs> Chief Powell to join us for this session. Sure. Okay, we are returning to public session at 536. I would entertain a motion to appoint Denny Powell. Assistant Chief Denny Powell promoted to interim chief beginning August 11th at 1700 hours. I so move. I second. <laughs> Are you going to second anything? It is like change. Hearing no discussion, may we vote? Uh, it's been moved and seconded to appoint Assistant Chief Danny Powell as interim fire chief, effective August 11th, 2023, at 1700 hours. Um, Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. And Mr. Mucci? Yes. <laughs> so yes, I said it. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it would be taken in a vote of no confidence. <laughs> Did I hear that the um, the firefighters are also requesting an executive session? Yes. Oh. You want to do this one? Okay. Oh, that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'd yeah. like right. to make a motion to... What's the purpose? Oh, I would like to make a motion to enter executive session for the purpose of... Now you're going to make me have to find it. Compensation um, of compens an employee. Um, discipline or compensation or... Uh, of an employee. Um, all those. All those. Mm -hmm. Pretty much the same thing you just went into. <laughs> yes. Sorry about that. I, but a different uh, topic. I'm sorry. I have moved. Okay. Second. Moved and seconded to an executive session to request to the fire fire department for reasons stated. Um, Mr. Richards. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Mr. Moyer. Yes. Recess at 538. So easy in the old days, we could just go in the executive yeah. session for multiple things at the same time. We return to regular session at 645, 5, 6, 5. 546, and um, we will be taking no action. Um, let's see. Cemetery Road Report. Um, could we talk about the new fountain later? It may be new business sure. or next time. Sure. Okay. Um, the whole report we can basically move ahead with. With the exception of one thing that I had that I would like to bring up. Okay, sure. Okay. Um, it, it, for a cemetery, um, I did go to a cemetery conference last week uh, in Dayton and uh, it was very informative and different things and, and illustrious. And uh, uh, we did a uh, tour of the Calgary Cemetery National Burial Area the and the Cateria and uh, the um, Garden of Life or whatever it's called. Uh, boy, that's quite the building. Yeah. Uh, I don't even want to get into that. Um, but <laughs> I was, I was uh, volunteered uh, by persuasion to uh, chair a, a, a seminar on natural burials in the area and uh, it went very well a lot of interest amazing you know from where we started 10 years ago to what we're doing now I mean it's just really really great um, the other thing which was enlightening which we will it's an ongoing thing is I didn't understand prior to last week that with columbariums the cemetery should provide the niche doors for the interments, interments of the, of the ashes. It was recommended because we want to have a consistent look on all sides for all times of all the doors. I originally thought we'd just give a blank door to the customer, as it were. They'd have it etched wherever they found and whatever they wanted to have on there, and and then we put it back on. It was very strongly advised not to do that because it would be, over the years, it would be such a mishmash of, of looks and potential colors and, and things that may or may not be attached to the outside of it. 
They said, do it yourself. Tell the people before they buy, or you know, when they're negotiating to, to buy a, a column bearing that this is the, the rule that we will provide it, and you will you know, have a certain space for your name and your birth and death date, and you know, for a second person, if that's the case, you know, for a potentially a veteran's marker, which are available, uh, if we choose to allow that, I would suggest that we would. Um, but the fonts would be the same, the sizes would be the same, and the lettering, you know, consistently across the board. This is through Dodds, uh, who I think we should use. I, I don't see a particularly compelling reason to, to send these doors away to California to have them done for maybe $50 less or something. The customer would be paying the cost of the, of the, of the door inscription. Um, we would pass that on. Now, we could decide that we want to add $100 to the cost of this and make a couple of bucks on it. Traditionally, we try and you know, pass along the cost of things to the, to the customer and not really try and mark things up too much. So, but that's a thought. We don't have to decide it today. However, we do have an interment in the, sem in the columbarium coming up, but as the lady from Dodds told me, you know, people should not or cannot expect to have a door finished at the time you have a service to, to in turn uh, an urn. Very similar to if someone's buried, there's not, a, there's not a tombstone that's finished on site when you bury them. I mean, you bury somebody and then they buy a tombstone and six months later, whenever it's, it's made, then it's, it's put on site. So uh, that's the basic standard operating procedure. It's, it's not expected to have a finished door. Uh, when the, you, know, you can put a blank door in and then later you replace it with a, with a finished door. But it is provided by us. It is going to be an extra step, I understand, but with a with a fairly complete form of what the people want and what they should expect, it should go fairly, fairly simply, easily. Sounds good to me. Okay. I just want to say one thing, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm, I don't have a big horse in this race very much. You said it gets uniformly look, it would look not matching and who knows what they put on it. I'm just going to say it is in Yellow Springs. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. That's all I have to say. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you. I don't know. Well, I guess we can uh, agree or, or, or move to do it. We don't have much of a choice. We, I mean, I guess we either say we do it or we don't. Yeah. That is, we have uniform. We, we, have, we, we, we do everybody's engravings the same at this particular place, or we say, here's your, you know, here's your space, make it what you mm -hmm. have it engraved. Mm -hmm. I would support the uniformity. I would too. I would entertain a motion to um, support us having a uniform agreement. So moved. Second. May we vote? It's been moved and yeah. <clears throat> it's been moved and seconded to adopt requirements for uniform columbarian. Doors, niche doors. Edge doors. Niche. Ni niche. N-I-C-H. Niche door. Niche door. Uh -huh. okay. um, Mr. Mucci. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Ms. Moore. Yes. It's a motion approved. Uh, that's all I had for, for Cemetery Road. Um, fiscal officer is not here. Um, she has a resolution for us. Um, resol I would entertain a motion to pass um, resolution 2023-33, um, amendment of permanent appropriations, whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize amending the following appropriations, Glen Forest Cemetery Fund increased by 2000 and Fire Fund um, increased by 2000 and the uh, travel and meeting. Column. No. The Miami Township Trustees authorize the fiscal officers to 
do so immediately. So moved. Yeah. I'll second it and open it for discussion because it looks like Hollister has. Um, just to say, we approved uh, the overall uh, annual budget for the rest of the year. Uh, Three weeks ago, and now we have changes. Just commenting. I would venture to say this would be, if not the first, then one in a long line of changes between now and December 31st. Yep. yep. So. Okay. Here we go. To move and second it to adapt to resolution 2023-33 amendment of permit appropriations as specified. Mr. Newter? Yes. Ms. Meyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. The resolution is adopted. Okay. Um, good to see you, Richard. Um, to, just a second before we go ahead. I have sitting here resolution 2023 that you just read, that 31 on my Agenda it says dash 32, and we just read 33. I yeah. just wanted to make sure you got the right number. Thank you. Um, before the meeting started, we, we noted that instead of 32 and 33, 31, 32, we have 32. Okay. 33. And before you report, I'd like to say um, just do one thing about zoning. Um, I want to report the progress on our new BZA process. We're getting close to launch. Um, I have three applications for variance, administrative appeal, and conditional use. I, I want to showcase one of them to show you where the direction I've gone. So here's the new one for variance, for example. Um, and it has a checklist of six items that, that you need to complete your um, zoning request. I'll go through it quickly, application fee, whatever. Um, the, third, the fourth one is site plan, if applicable. Um, okay, application fee, refusal notice if, to zoning order, if applicable. Um, an adjacent property owner's list within, for property owners within 300 feet. Number four, site plan, if applicable. And C sample site plan on page two, so there's no question. Like I was, little, stole this from another township. They put a, a little site plan example with um, telling us what you've asked on other forms to include, property lines, street name, driveways, parking. I won't read it all, but very clear what, what they need to have. Um, and then the actual application with um, applicant's name, owner's name, if different, the parcel numbers. And, and then um, most important part that makes each of them different is um, applicant statement. And normally our, our, our procedure so far has been to um, well, send us a letter of why you're appealing. Well, we need more information. This is what you need to consider. Well, can you give you this information? And there's a lot of back and forth. I, I tried to align this with the um, zoning resolution. For example, I went to the variance section and saw what they base it on. And this was very much like other um, townships too. I'll just read the first three. So it asks somebody to make an application statement answering to the questions that, that pertain, such as, number one, under the current rules, is the applicant deprived of the property rights commonly enjoyed by other properties in the same district? Two, are there special conditions and circumstances which are peculiar to the land structures or building involved, which are not applicable to other lands, structures, or buildings? Number three, would the gaining of this variance request confer the applicant any special privilege that is denied by the resolution to other land structures or buildings in the same district? Those words aren't important. What is important is that it's the criteria upon that we base it on and it aligns with our zoning code. So they could they could take these points and write their own statement. So I just tried to give you an idea of what I was doing. And so I got three of these, one for variance, one, um, one for conditional use, and one for administrative appeal. And then I have a clear set of 
procedures for a new coordinator from a BZA hearing, um, a BZA coordinator. Um, and I've gone, went through this with Richard, and he gave me some good pointers, and what took the draft, and I went through. Cynthia has a good eye for procedure and detail and detail and detail, and she gave me some pointers, and I refined it, and I think it's a pretty good procedure to, to take someone from application all the way to scheduling, communicating, booking rooms, getting minutes to the end. And um, I would like to, um, as soon as I find my paper, um, so the next step is Deb Slater and I are going to add a page to our website, you know, with a better description of the BZA process, what the possibilities are, and the applications. Like, what is a variance? In what case do you use a conditional use application? In what case do you use an administrative appeal? And um, get, get that website done so that people can be directed on how to make a coherent request for BZA. Has Richard reviewed the samples that you have? Um, we, we only talked about the variance one briefly in the office. Yeah, and you said you would review them. Yeah. Um, I will send you, I actually improved this one. I actually improved them, so I'll send you the, the newest ones. I'll, um, I, I actually came in, with the meeting we had, what the purpose of it was to review them, but we, um, it, many other factors were brought up, so we didn't get to that. So okay. I'll just have, have you review them by, by yourself and send me your suggestions. Um, so I would like to make a motion to create the position compensated at the rate of $200 per hearing. And I don't know what comes first, the chicken or the egg. Do we create the position, hire somebody, and then launch it, or do we, yeah. So it, we, we have to get it up on the website. And, like to point to somebody and say, oh, you, you want to appeal an administrative, you want an administrative appeal? There's where you go. And that's the process, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm, I got confused at, at the end there. Are, are you talking about the job description of the coordinator, or are you talking about the applications putting on the website? Oh, the applications. The applications. Okay. The, there's, yeah, once, you know, the, as long as the applications don't contradict the code, and to all of our advantage, both looking at other people's applications and the experience we've had, those factors have all been considered, then I think it's, it's appropriate to give them a try. Thank you. But do we need to vote on them before you put them up? Uh, that's a little, we're a little premature. I mean, Richard hasn't had a chance to review them yet. Right. But I'm not saying tonight. Yeah, I would think yes. I would agree with you. Okay. I, w I shall send them to Richard and I can review them. But you started that conversation with, the, should we, Hire a BZA coordinator like now. Should we? Um, or does it have to have the paperwork, the, uh, the supporting okay. paperwork? We could hold off on that then. Well, what was your suggestion? Well, not so much hire someone now, but make a motion to create the position so that it can be offered if, in case we get it together before we meet again. <laughs> like, what if we're ready to launch in a week? Or I guess we can wait two weeks. You're the chair. You need to make the motion or? I remove the motion. <laughs> we'll wait two weeks and hopefully it'll be done in two weeks. But, um, that's cool. All right, well, I, I commend you on the efforts that you put into yeah, this program. That sounds good. So um, I appreciate that. Um, th there is one thing, though, and this might le lead into Richard's report. Um, Agritourism. I, I, I definitely believe we should have some application process, but I don't know if it goes to the zoning inspector or to the BZA. And I don't know. It goes to the zoning inspector. Okay, and would you say you already have a, um, a process for permits? Do you see it being yeah, able to fit within the process 
of the yeah. permit you already have. Yes. So in this last case where someone didn't, the last case who shall not be named who wanted agritourism, did they fill out the, the permit? No, they just sent me their idea. And informally, I went over back and forth with them, and they, and then they, and, and the informal discussion didn't result in a, in a resolution. But so, is that so right I had them come in and make an application, a zone for a zoning permit, okay. and I turned it down, and they okay. are appealing that decision. So maybe we just need to make people aware that if they're, does this is what I don't understand if. if we do, don't permit agritourism. Why do they, they apply for the permit just for all the well, that, um, the all buildings, right. the ingresses and ingresses, and yeah, all that? Yeah. Okay, so they do need a permit, mm -hmm. and um, the but, permit is for the the structures and things, or for whether or not they can carry on with agritourism. Well, you can't get a permit. You know, if if, if you come in to the to me and say I want to. Um, you know, open up car wash on my farm, I'll say that's not permitted, okay? It doesn't make any difference whether it meets all the setback requirements and, and everything else. Well, the same way with agritourism. If you come in and you say, I'm going to do this, and, and I look at, at the definition of agritourism and say, that doesn't seem to fit, then I would say no. So, so we need to let people know that they if they want to propose agritourism, they have to take use the permit that we already have. Yeah, that's... that's and then they can get well, a, clear, okay. a clear up or down. Yes, I guess what... Agritourism is, is, is awkward because we didn't get to write the code. Mm -hmm. right? So we're dealing with something that's very slippery in terms of everything else that we have in the book. Yes, it's very easy to say, you know, your plans meet these setback requirements or these ingress and egress or whatever. It's much more difficult to say, is it agritourism? Because people have a wide variety of ideas and it's already been proven in the courts that the decisions aren't, aren't clear. Okay, or, I mean, in some cases, the courts have made the decisions clear, but they're not even the same from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. Yeah. So it's a, it's a sticky subject. Um, the, I think that it's, it's, you're right that the question is, is there a, a, a two-step process? In other words, is there any reason to come in and, and try to get a permit if you had, if you were really being decided is what you want to do with agritourism or not, because that's that's not usually the issue. But in this case, it often is. And I mean, often this is the the second agritourism um, question that we've had here. Um, I've worked closely with with other entities in, in Green County trying to understand what's going on in different jurisdictions and what's appropriate. Um, okay. I don't know how else other than to say to someone, here's what I propose to do. So we could add an we could have a special sub permit for agritourism that said spell out the agritourism agritourism activities. Okay. Like but in the case that that is coming, uh, um, it'll, be careful. It'll, I'm not sure we should be talking about. Yeah, well, it has been scheduled. Yeah. I'm, okay. Yeah, but let's not talk about the details of the. Okay, not the, not the details, but the the issue was I used the statute that our the state of Ohio has their definitions of agritourism to look at. And what it said counts and doesn't count. And from that, I said it didn't qualify. I didn't even get down to the activity. Yeah, so I don't know. 
I mean, maybe a sub permit could do that. Because what you're talking about is, are you eligible to do this? Are you a working right. farm? And if so, if that was determined, what would your activity be? Maybe that that could be a sub permit. Yeah. Like I say, we've had so little experience yeah. with all of this. And as I say, the, the other thing is that agritourism seems to be a strong motivator. So it's not, for most people, for some, no, I shouldn't say most people, most of the people I've talked to, I explain my understanding of the, of the statute and they say, oh, okay. And but I got some people that say, no, I want to do what I want to do. And then I have to make a decision in one based on some factual information, or if if not the factual information, then on on the interpretation of what it is. And then they can apply for a variance. Right. Like well, they, they they would appeal my decision. Right. This is right. An appeal. An yeah. An appeal. But yeah. Let me just say something. I've been since. Maryland started with, with different forms. I've gone back to the code and looked at our code, and we actually have six different categories of uh, issues that the BZA is empowered to deal with. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the procedures for each one are slightly different. Two of them are almost identical. It's like, which one do you pick? Mm -hmm. um, and you know, on that, and then going over some of the questions, I I communicated with Jen Hoover on, you know, is my interpretation the same as your interpretation of some of these things? Because it's it's another one of those things where it's just not crystal clear even in our own code about mm -hmm. what's the appropriate thing to do. Mm -hmm. How do you decide whether something is agritourism or not? For example, or you know, if and it is it. Is it simply I make a decision and someone appeals my decision? Or is it something more like uh, the BCA is empowered to determine similar uses? Is this similar to this? Mm -hmm. And I've got some answers on that, but that's not what we need to discuss yeah. here tonight. Okay. Um, I have one other similar point. Um, temporary use. Um, should it have, I'm going to give out the pros and cons of having its own um, application. And, and the con would be that we're not trying to hang out our shingle and say, everybody come get to some temporary use. Like we're, um, we're not trying to encourage temporary use. I think it would be and, and I'm, I'm, sure and, to try to. Um, can sell I finish that out? talking? Oh, okay, please. I didn't Thanks. realize you were. Um, but the downside to not having clear guidelines on that is that you, the wild, the wide variety, and as it's been pointed out, there's up until now the, the legend says that Steve Weirig is the only one who's ever applied to it, and then we had another one, and the second application. And this is no criticism to her or anybody. Um, was more like, like, hey, a friendly email here. This, this is my formal notice to apply, and it was like a memo. And Richard's like, well, wait a minute, that we need a little more information than that. She sent a little bit more information, and it, it wasn't very comprehensive ex as far as what is expected. Like, if you if you want to have a temporary use, um, how many people are going to be there? Is it going to be ticketed? Do you have adequate parking? Do you have a safe way to come in and come out? Do you have, how is the food? If you're having food, who's going to serve the food? Are they licensed? Are they, you know? Okay, because our trust? code doesn't spell out any mm -hmm. rules for temporary use. So we can't tell people what it is they have to tell us. Then how do we decide whether well, the, we accept The zoning it commission realizes that it is too vague mm -hmm. and they are doing their putting you know significant time into trying to clarify trying to put terms that people would would um yeah. you know, need to meet there's there's 
even some question, and this, if you go and look at different zoning codes, whether it even belongs under the BZA, whether it should be, if these are the specifications for temporary use, then it can just be permitted. You either meet them or you don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but we can, we can ask for, a lot of that could just be, like I said, we have for site plans for other things, a lot of that would be covered in a site plan, you know? Um, I, I feel like this is, <clears throat> if we were gonna have this discussion, I would like to have had background material. Okay. And I think in a way what's going on is the two of you are continuing Good, you know, it's important for the happen. Well, but I feel like it doesn't leave anywhere, though. When, I'm sorry, when Richard and I discuss it, for me, it doesn't leave anywhere. But I'd be happy to be part of a, a um, discussion, but I have not seen any of the background okay. material. I, have, I don't have the framework, the context. So I'm not sure there there is that front of the table. We have a, a, a one paragraph thing that says temporary use. We have people bringing ideas to us for temporary use. I haven't use. read the. The, the back and forth with the attorneys. I haven't. Well, that that's something. That I haven't read else. this. I haven't had a fresh look at the code. I didn't know we were going to okay. be talking about well, this. And then tonight. there's some question about whether this is the responsibility of the trustees or the responsibility of the zoning commission. Mm -hmm. To create. A permit process for now the code spells out. I mean, they don't go into great detail, but they talk about permits. That's where it is in the code. Mm -hmm. In the zoning code. And so if that process is to be changed, I think it's probably an amendment to the code. Through temporary through each Well, month. through any any I mean, the, even the, the original zoning permit form that I was, was given, and we've modified it a little bit, referenced the Ohio revised code at the top of it. Okay, now I don't know, I didn't, I didn't do the research to say what's in the ORC that you know, would help generate this application. But, um, that's the only information I have about where any of our application forms have come from, is that they, at the top of them, they all once say something about the ORC on them. Mm -hmm. so I, you know, they, I don't get the, I mean, none of us um, have, have been involved in, in township government long enough to go back to when those first forms were were put into place and how they were put into place. So you're saying whether there would be an application for temporary use should go to the zone, possibly go to the zoning commission to, to create, to, to either make a change to the code or right. create a permit. I don't know, but I'm questioning. Okay. I, I'm, not, I'm not the authority on as, this. As, pe yeah, as people come with their ideas and their wide variety of requests we we just say hands off they they have to deal with it or it's it's, well, it's a, a tough balance here yeah um well i'll well I'll again go. i would almost defer to our legal counsel uh, that sounds like a no, it's a well, <laughs> well worn path here. Um, refer to her. How do we handle the temporary use permit? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll do it. Um, meanwhile, I would like to get or let I, Richard do it simply because it's his. You know, it's his realm of I mean, I'll, I'll be happy to, I mean, I still need to read, all right, let's keep track. We're, we're, if we're just talking about having some kind of a form or 
additional forms, let's just, talk, let's just call it that way, beyond our standard zoning permit, are, should those forms be generated by the zoning commission or by anybody who's administering the process and, and puts down you know, what they okay, need, I'll what they feel they need to make a decision? I told her I was generating new forms. She says, great, when you get it done, maybe you're on by me. I mean, she didn't see, she didn't blink an eye at, at me creating new forms. I mean, I mean, if we, if you were just coming into the jobs, there'd be forms there that you didn't create. I, I want to get more clarity and more uniformity so that people know what to expect when they come to us. Not like, oh, go ahead and tell me what you want to do. And they write you something, this is what I want to do. I want to, have a uniformity of what people expect when they apply for something. Mm -hmm. um, I would also like to go through with <coughs> the three forms that I have created. I'd love if you over if you looked at them, but I'll ask her. But I'm not. I don't want to get into a round and round. We have to get everything perfect before we launch anything. You know, all, there's all these scenarios. What if? What if? What if? What if? Because the process we have now is not exact. It's not. It's, it's not. It's far from exact. I, and to I, think that I have to be exact before we move forward to a clearer process is. is I don't think having a form that doesn't ask a question that then might be asked at a hearing is a problem. But I'm not sure. I I just went through OTA training that seemed to say that the, that the BCA could only listen to testimony, they couldn't solicit it. If that's true, then it's, it's very important that all of the information that's relevant to the case be generated before the case. Right. All right. Which it sounds like but we're that, on the right track in that way. Well, that, you know, and as I say, I don't know if that's critical or not. It certainly turns everything upside down from the way that, mm -hmm. that for example, our VCA has operated for as, as long as we can remember, right? So there's, there's that issue of trying to anticipate everything that's needed. The other is that, for example, I've modified the regular zoning permit form as I've learned that it needs additional information, okay? That it, that it didn't say this permit is only good for one year, okay, which is a standard item but it wasn't on the permit and that helps people i mean they could say well it's in the code you know it's it you put it on the form it's helpful but it doesn't it isn't part of the information that that helps determine whether it's it's granted or not but most most of the zoning is 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 very simple it's only recently that we've started to work very hard at picking it apart and going after every detail, okay? And that's, that's the big change, not sitting down and talking about what people want to do and then figuring out what seems like the best course for them to follow. It's, no, we have to, you know, we have to ask all the questions, right? You know, or they have to know what all the questions are. And I don't, I don't know what all the questions are. I don't even know what we're talking about now, but... Um, okay, well, I'm talking about trying to make the, a form that asks people well, for everything that you need to know. Or, have, or saying, hey, write me an email and tell me what you're going to do, and then I'll write you another email and tell you what you missed, and then you write back no. and you tell okay. me what you did. That, that uh, has mean, only What are we happened. looking for per section? I, I, I didn't say I could make a form that covers every eventuality. No. I, I, feel, I feel... I appreciate... I appreciate you looking out for all these things. I also feel like it feels like a little bit of obstruction. Like the process is far from perfect now, yet we want it perfect. I, I never said we're going to create a form where we get every single bit of information, but we can certainly have it reflect what we say in our code is required for mm -hmm. what they're applying for. And that's, and there's no, I don't think there's any problem with that. That's, it's just taking the code and writing it on a, on a piece of paper, which is what I do when I, when I talk to somebody and they say, 
well, can I get a variance on this? And I chat about variances, and then I, and then I send them the information about getting a variance. All right? I have, I, in, because you were talking about, about new forms quite a while ago, the most recent, I had two requests about people that were interested in variances, not asking for one, interested. So I made a form that said, well, this is the information that you would have to provide, and these are the criteria that the code asks for. So I did both the form and the, the copy the code out. So they didn't have to look up the code themselves. It was, it was there for them. And, and that's a trial. Okay, I haven't had either of those returned. Neither person has made an application, but they have one that they can use to apply if they want. The, the, the other thing that is missing in all of this, and I don't know where it's going to lead, I can say to someone, based on my knowledge of the code, of these words, you don't qualify. But that doesn't mean that our BZA won't grant them the variance. And, we're, and that's another issue that we're dealing with. So for me to say, you don't qualify for a variance, I can't do that. No matter whether they filled out the form or not filled out the form. Because I don't make the decision on a variance. Someone may not qualify for a permit, but, but not a variance. That's yeah. an entirely different thing. Could I have a 30 seconds? You could have as much time as you want. <laughs> I just want us to not lose sight of the reason that we're doing all of this, and that is to keep us out of common pleas court. Right. Because once it gets there, it's taken out of our hands for the most part. And someone else makes that decision on, on how a resident may be able to proceed or not. It's taken out of our hands. It needs to stay with us. Not us, us, but us, Miami Township. Miami Township. And that's our goal. To do it the best shot that we can to have it defensible and legal and fair. And, and that's why when you had told me, you like if somebody comes in, you talk to them, and you talk it out with them, and, and talk back and forth, and maybe ask more information and talk again. And we delay the process. Um, there, there could be, there may have recently been someone who asked for a BZA hearing, and there was back and forth, install, 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 and really didn't get their right to, uh, whether you thought sh that person had a good case or not, did they get their day at, at, in, the, in the BZA hearing? And no, it didn't have to do with my opinion of whether they had a good case or not. I asked for additional information before I asked them to come in so I could issue or not issue them a permit. And once they decided to come in and get the permit, and I turned it down, we started the process for a hearing. Okay. Done, Chris? I can, that's all documented. I, I have one thing that I would like to bring up uh, as a request from a local citizen, and has to do with procedure, and uh, again, this is not our function, but uh, there apparently is a request pending, or soon to be pending, about the use of property on Route 68, uh, and it's very time sensitive, and uh, I've been asked to, to okay, I just got do my best. an answer from the owners of the property, uh -huh. okay, on Sunday, okay. this yesterday, uh, I, all right? Uh, and I tried to call the person making the request today mm -hmm. and left a message. Okay. All right. I just said I would, Yeah. Well, know. okay, so it's it's all Bring it up. being done. Okay. I know nothing about that. 
thankfully. <laughs> I just have a stupid question. Um, not a stupid There's question. There's no questions. They're stupid. Um, when they said you're applying for a zoning certificate, is there actually a certificate? No. Okay. It's, it's the permit. It's That's just the it's form. Just the and they don't have to like it. When, it's not when, like the, the, no, the, no, the no, department no. where you have to hang it or something. Like, no. like, the, um, okay, like the building code people. Right. Okay. Um, I don't think I have any. Oh, I. Do you have anything to say before Richard gives his report? Or? You haven't given your report. No, what? Marilyn Moyer uh, no, no, didn't ask to uh, yeah, before. roll out my new program. The, no, I'm just kidding. The new, the um, only report I think I, well, all right. Um, you don't I issued, I signed a survey record that for a lot split on Houston Run. Um, that's the only regular business. Uh, the um, Zoning Commission met, they continued to discuss uh, temporary use permits and solar um, zoning. And they were, they were continuing with that. The, um, I have now a date for um, a BZA hearing, it'll be September 14th on this um, question about agritourism. Question, if it doesn't already happen, I'm, uh, I haven't got my calendar, are you planning to attend the, the county regional planning zoning inspectors meeting next, having to do with agritourism? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, that's, that's, that's somewhat that's in the future. Or but, oh, I, I thought it was relatively close coming up. No? Mm, well, I'd have, to, I'd have to look at my calendar, but I don't, unless, they haven't been, they don't, haven't been meeting very often. Yeah. But yes, if they, I was, I'm one of the persons that suggested that they have one on agritourism. Um, bless your little heart. Chris, no, I'm finished, thank you. No, Chris, if, if, if you've seen a communication or a date about that, let me know, just in case something Deanna went just by. Deanna mentioned it at our last meeting. But I can, I can try to remember to call and ask, I too. Think, I think it's October. Yeah, I don't. I, I think it's fairly far really? in the wow. future. Okay. They are holding, if, like if, if anybody uh, attended the last ones, they are holding an uh, a, a education session again, like eight weeks of, uh, of zoning and planning um, public, or, you know, for zoning officials and interested parties. When does that start? Uh, relatively soon. I will get the dates. Uh, I'm surprised she hasn't sent those out, and I will make sure that you know it's it's is this more or less the same as what's been done in yes. the past mm -hmm. yeah any new business i would like to ask don would you mind uh contacting the powers that be at home and ask them to use the back area for parking for friday sure Thank you. Um, I don't know how this. I have some news. I don't know how this got passed. Um, why it wasn't in correspondence, but um, this, this is from um, do you have any contact information. This is from I don't know Joshua Cross. Um, it's been brought to my attention that the Ohio Edison customers served in Miami Township were not part of the Greene County aggregation efforts. All customers do have the ability to shop their individual accounts through the PUCO Apples to Apples website. They're saying Miami Township were not a part of the Greene County. So when they voted for to aggregate, um, what was it, electricity last time, we were not a part of that? Yes, we were, but apparently s certain members of the of the general public in Miami Township opted either okay. did not choose to opt in or opt out. I've had correspondence okay. with him okay. uh, regarding this, and I had okay. asked him for 
if you've got addresses of these people, I, you know, I'd be happy to send them a little card or something and say that you can do it. Because it isn't the entire. Um, it is, but everybody board. except for, he mentions like 60 people or 60 homes or something oh, like that in okay. the township. So we can't really outreach and what he, he's asking us to do until we know who they are. Yeah, and he said he did not have addresses. He, okay. he, he gave me quadrants, like there's 11 people, you know, in the northwest corner. Well, that doesn't help me because I can't put that in the post. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's like I tried to make a list of every resident for when we were back dealing with COVID information. That took a long time. Oh, yeah. Uh, I have pretty thorough lists by, by road. Well, let's hope we don't have another COVID out there. Um, I see no old business. Um, <clears throat> unless anybody has anything else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I shall move. A second. Yes. Aye. 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 Aye.